was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. like a host of blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. My name is Abdullah Bashir Dean, and I'm 30 years old. And I'm doing, uh, I'm, sell, I'm doing sales and marketing. Ismail Hassan, I'm 24 years and I'm studying civil engineering by Pentec, <coughs> University of Technology. My name is Abdulaziz Hassan Mohammed, I'm 27 years old and I'm an Islamic school teacher in Athens, Estonia. My name is Abdurrahman Mohammed, uh, I'm 31 years old, I'm a businessman. My name is uh, Zaki Farah, I, I work with the organization, which is Somali Refugee Aid Agent, SORA. My name is Khalif Mohammed Ibrahim. I'm 32 years. I'm working with the community. Our government, Somalia, was collapsed in 1991. Our people become a refugee and out of the country. Because when the government collapsed, all community needs has been ended, like the hospitals, and uh, the, the security and uh, it, and all about those things was ended and the people can't live well there is no government so people they come out of the country and, and they are living in uh, the neighboring country like Kenya and Ethiopia also Djibouti and some of them they fled in European countries America and here like South Africa Seeing people being killed is always there. It's an obvious case, but you'll see everybody's being killed because someone is killed, a friend is killed, a neighbor is killed. You'll see all those things in Somalia, whereby it's seeing, you sight the things and you see the things, but it becomes like normal thing because it's everything, everyday thing, which is going on every day. But in, as a young generation, you can survive in a situation whereby is always in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a war. You have to search for a life. Some places are in peace and some places are still in, some in trouble. So basically what we do here is uh, we run to where there is peace first before we flee the country. And Alhamdulillah, uh, right now at the moment, um, still fine and my family also, but we are in, we are in fear. So where there's no peace, I mean, no matter what's gonna, not going to happen to you, you, the fear only will, you know, uh, cost you so much to flee the country without, you know, uh, any circumstances. You can't just count all the way from Somalia, boom to South Africa, just like that, from a blue. So you have to know there is somebody somewhere who is in South Africa, a friend of yours, a cousin of yours, uncle of yours, somebody tells you that he's in South Africa. So that's the way people flee. You can't just flee from one place to another place without that's what you call communication. When people <coughs> think that other people are running away from their country, what, what, what they say in their mind is like, okay, these people are poor, they are uneducated, they are unexperienced, or you know, they need to get developed. But what, one thing I want to say is like many people I know, although they ran away from their country, they've got degrees, they experienced, like my uncle, he used to fly for the Air Force of Somalia, and now he's in Egypt. So, yeah, but I've seen my, and when I was young, our families was put in cult or robbed, no, no, but it has happened to everyone. But that thing, uh, it doesn't give me, or if I talk, it doesn't give me what you call uh, and, and hope, you know. It happened, it's a past. We forget what happened past. We focus on our future, focus on our life. We don't look in the backside. The Somali people in South Africa now, they don't have, and they can't go to, to work in any other organization because they are refugee. So the solution for their, for their, because the government give them free movement. You can go look for work, move wherever you want. Go wherever you want. So this gentleman, he doesn't have anything. So he has to open a small, small business. Maybe he will take a hawker, taking a staff by hand, from door to door, searching for bread, for, for the daily bread. Every day, maybe he get 20 rand, he put 10 rand. He get 100 rand, he put 80 rand, he eat 20 rand. 
So after that, he just opened a small kiosk, a small business, whereby he can, he can, he can help himself for his future, because nobody will employ him at the end of the day. Nobody will employ him. You go to anybody, you tell them, okay, I need a work, I've got a degree in this and that, they will tell you, where is your paper? Where is your ID? Where is this? You cannot do it. We came and we went into the locations. We invested, you know, whatever we had money uh, to, to open a small shop, you know. Whereby, uh, in, uh, in, you know, long time ago, the, the people who stays in the locations or in the small villages, they used to travel far to the malls to buy, you know, the, the, the daily, you know, needs. So we, we made it easy for them because we can't open shops in the towns like here, uh, in the residential area, which is difficult, you know. But then it, it became so easy to them to come by from our shops or from any other foreigner who opens a small shop and whereby he sells uh, the price, the normal price that the other store sells. And then uh, the xenophobia starts because they realize that, you know, the foreigners are creating money. We are not creating money. We are try we're just trying to, 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 to look for our living costs. They are looking for a better life. They are looking for something that, that, that they can help <coughs> their family or to survive the, 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 there. So, when they get that place, they don't know how to communicate with the neighbor. Example, if you want to open a shop, a place, that place you don't know. But there is, uh, there is uh, other people who are who staying there. So first you have to ask them, can you open, if you can open, a, if you can open I mean, a shop there, you have to ask them. Because of maybe there is, maybe they have a problem that place. So most of the people, they are fear for that place. And you open a shop, so the, the robber come and he can, he can kill you. Because you didn't ask any person. No one can help you. But if you ask the neighbor or the community, they can say to my friend, this place is, is, is a dangerous place. Don't open a shop here. Even, even if you walk anywhere in South Africa, South Africa will know this is a Somalian. They're well known. Even if you hide yourself, this face is called Somalian. It's well known. That you can't hide. So you have to fear because you see someone, your friend of yours, being killed, another friend has been shot. If you walk, you can't walk alone. The killing is, is a different, totally, and uh, is a, by another way, which is and uh, jealous. The local uh, business, they think that Somalians took their business or their opportunity. Some of them, they killing like that. And they give somebody uh, some money, and they said, "Kill that man." And he want uh, he want that guy through to this shop, and he shoot the man, and he don't take nothing in the shop, and it goes straight. And he do again, and he do again, and he do again. That's why many Somalians are died here in South Africa. And uh, there is uh, another reason that caused the killings, and our people, and they don't know how to open, some, some of them, they don't know how to open the bank, and they use the ATM, their pockets. They put the money in the pocket, and the TVs, they think that Somalians, they have the money and they collect that and they search money in his pocket. So you come from Somalia, thinking that you are leading a very good life here, then otherwise it goes from the frying pan to the fire, you drop in a fire because you get shot. For that small thing that you think that it will help you, you will get life on it, people come and take it from you or they shoot you. Okay, uh, last year in 2011, one of my friends, he has been shot here in Dialf seven times. He was just delivering. And the reason for that is, you know, they believe that the foreigners, the, 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 the local, you know, residents, they believe <coughs> that the foreigners stole the opportunity of working. Uh, they say he used to deliver, you know, some stocks into the shops. Now they are a group of, you know, colored, you know, thugs, and they used to, uh, they used to watch him for over three months. Where does this guy go? And this case came to us. Somalian Refugee Aid Agency. We contacted the United Nations and the United Nations never did anything because they need a proof. Once you don't know who killed him. But then the guys, they came, they shot him seven times and they took whatever, whatever money he had and they stole also some of the stock that he had with the, with the Baki. And they had a car 
or Ivan, they run away with uh, whatever they can. So uh, his friend who was working with, he contacted me and he asked me, what happened to you? How can you be a good friend? Then I told him, listen, Cape Town is very big. We stay miles away from each other. We only contact each and every one of us maybe once a month to see, hey guys, how are you doing? So I only had his death for about after three days. I never knew what's gonna happen. But this was not the first thing that was happening to the Somalian. Many of them, I can't say millions, but I can say thousands of Somalians died through that, you know, uh, actions or crisis. So whether you see in shops or, and you know, whatever we can say is, once the person dies, he can't come back. He can't come back. He's gone forever. So you have to pray for him so that he can rest in peace. And uh, the case was dismissed. <clears throat> Nothing happened. And this still, we, are, we, we don't know what to do about what, what happened previously. And uh, I can't say yeah. anything because... The cultures are different. Our backgrounds are different. You see, someone who comes from Europe, he will not be able to stay here and follow the same culture. He comes with his own culture, same like us. In Somalia, we've got different cultures. But if we come in a common ground and we all learn one, like if we know, it's like, for, a, for example, me and you, we need for us to understand each other. We, we should know one language, like English. If I speak my language, you speak your language. Then I don't know how, how we are going to understand each other. Uh, I'm trying to give back to the Somalian community so that they can learn English, to make them understand English, so that they can interact with the people and they can speak English with other people. So I opened that school to make them be proud of themselves and be what they are, and they can talk to the others. Because if they don't know languages, there's going to be a barrier of communication. If, if they say, uh, the, the foreigners, they took uh, our opportunity of our job, <laughs> Uh, we, that we say we don't accept that. If they say they, 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 they come to our land, we don't accept that. But if they really say they are taking our women, okay, that's a great offense, okay. I have to back down. What I say is, a woman does not have a culture. Yes, I understand that. You can marry a woman, a woman does not have a culture. Can change anything. Yeah, a woman is a woman, right? Okay. She can be white, she can be Kosa, she can be whatever. Indian, whatever, Somali, she's a woman. Um, whether she is Somalian or Indian or Khosa, the important is to understand. Yeah. If you understand each other, then you can lie. No problem. I'm There's no problem. I'm must be a you see, even look, um, example, she's Christian and you are Muslim. And you understood each other. She can be Muslim. This girl, she's Muslim. And she speaks English. And you speak English. Yes, but you're Somalian, wait. No, and you're Somalian. But she comes from another culture. Will you marry her? I will marry she her. speaks English. She's a different culture. But the different languages. She doesn't speak Somali. She doesn't speak uh, uh, your, your la Somali language. She speaks English. So, will you marry her? Uh, if she's Muslim. If she's a religion man. Uh, then, then there's nothing like culture, right? There's no culture. If she's so, a Muslim, there's so no culture. It means that no the woman does not have a culture, right? Yes, yes there's no culture. Good. Except if she had a okay. I came away from my, from my country. I came here looking for life. So if I'm causing here problems, then it will be a big problem. But if I'm here, if I help the local people and then they help me back, then things will things will go smooth. My dream is to stay nicely in South Africa, get a, 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 a stable and good environment. Have a good life. That's my dream. My dream is, I if I go anywhere in Africa, not only South Africa, if I go to any country in, in Africa, they say, oh, this is our African brother. I want to believe that I can reach in a high state by starting now. That means to regroup, to, to unite. In our uh, proverb says, one finger cannot wash the entire face. You must use your five fingers to wash. My dream is to bring my, my people together. Uh, because I know what's my people and what's my life well, in the backside in my home country. My dream is my country. To, to go back 
finish. My vision is, and I want to see Somalia is united. Also, Africa is united. That's all. You should ever sit and talk with people Or else take a walk and create a straight talk Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger Listen what is right and say what is wrong You should ever sit and talk with people Or else take a walk and create a straight talk Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger